Oh hello, I'm the Arm Historian, and you might remember me from such educational videos as Top Roll, But What About the Bottom Roll? and Mommy Mommy, My Strap Hurts. From throwaway scenes meant to display a character's strength to full-length movies centered around the theme of arm wrestling, today I'll be your tour guide as we jauntily stroll down Hollywood Boulevard and take a look at Time's arm wrestling featured to various degrees as part of full-length movies. As always, before we start proper, remember to like the video and subscribe to the Arm Historian. Although I won't be giving a summary of entire plots, I think it goes without saying that you can expect some spoilers about the movies featured in a video like this. You have been warned. Might as well start with one of the most influential films in history as far as getting new people involved in the sport of arm wrestling goes. While the 1987 movie Over the Top featuring a rather understated Sylvester Stallone might now live on in the arm wrestling zeitgeist as a popular albeit somewhat cheesy cult film. Upon release it didn't fare quite as well, it lost quite a bit of money at the box office and was pretty much unilaterally hailed as boring and uninspired by critics at the time. But hey, what do they know? Sly plays a long-distance truck driver, arm wrestling guys at bars and truck stops along the way, while dealing with the rather unfortunate main plotline of connecting with his estranged son, the protagonist eventually finds himself competing in a huge arm wrestling tournament held in Las Vegas, where he could win cash and his very own truck. These events are of course loosely based on the actual over-the-top truckers tournament, a tournament held in 1986 that also featured an actual truck as the first place prize, and that was won by none other than the legendary John Brzink. Brzink would also go on to serve in some sort of advisory role for the creation of the over-the-top movie. Therefore, arm wrestling scenes in the movie are certainly serviceable, and throughout the decades, the movie has cemented itself as a true part of arm wrestling culture. Perhaps slightly more obscure than Over the Top predating it by a year is the Italian action movie Vendetta dal Futuro, aka Hands of Steel, aka Vendetta from the Future, aka Atomic Cyborg. In this flick, a scientifically altered cyborg has been granted literal hands and arms of steel. He quickly finds out these actual unbendable arms might come in handy for, you guessed it, winning arm wrestling matches. One of my favorite scenes is when the protagonist wins a high stake bar arm wrestling bout, which then very suddenly turns into one of the best old B-movie fighting scenes I've seen in a long while. If you like B-movie schlock and at times some of the most laughably acted arm wrestling you've ever seen, I heartily recommend this movie. Our next entry, Kinky Boots, is a 2005 British movie based on a true story. The movie tells the tale of a struggling shoe designer who by chance meets a drag queen named Lola. Determined to save his shoe-making business, the man decides to cater to a specific niche and starts designing fancy boots and shoes made to fit drag queens. In the middle of the film, after being hired as a consultant, Lola finds herself in a blue-colored bar being challenged to an arm wrestling match. Her challenger, Don, played by Nick Frost, famous from the British Cornetto series of movies, is portrayed as a typical tough man's man, albeit one that is slightly afraid of losing to a drag queen. The match takes place on a pub table with a white line drawn across it to indicate the center of the table, and both pullers are seated. Surrounded by rowdy onlookers, the two clasp hands, where it quickly becomes clear that Lola possesses far bigger hands. Both decide to go for starting with their thumbs uncapped for some reason, and the match starts by someone pressing a little bell. After the match started, Don quickly finds himself winning center by using what is basically sideways rotation, and after a short while, Lola starts pulling out of the losing position and is able to secure what appears to be a cup. Clearly able to dominate Don from this position, Lola realizes how much her opponent is struggling and how much she doesn't want to lose. In a feat of benevolence, she decides to forfeit the match and Don is declared the winner. 
While clearly meant to be a pop arm wrestling bout rather than a true sanctioned match, I feel like Kinky Boots at least tried somewhat to portray a couple real arm wrestling moves. Another bar table arm wrestling match comes to us courtesy of the 1986 David Cronenberg classic, The Fly. Seth Brundle, played brilliantly by the eccentric Jeff Goldblum, uses his newfound fly superpowers to overpower his opponent in this scene. Although little actual arm wrestling technique is featured here, I feel the scene deserves extra credit for the over the top resulting arm break and deadpan delivery from Goldblum. Talking about unfortunate arm wrestling mishaps, in the 1981 cult movie Time Bandits, directed by Monty Python's own Terry Gilliam, starring a rather young looking Sean Connery, two characters can be seen arm wrestling each other. Although they didn't even bother to get the hand positions right, the scene is worth watching alone for one of the arm wrestlers' actual arms coming off as a result of the match. Next up on our list is a movie that might by some in the arm wrestling community be considered as somewhat of a hidden gem. While not quite reaching the level of recognition as over the top in the western world, the Korean Champion is a masterclass of the fictional portrayal of arm wrestling in a Hollywood movie setting. In this somewhat fictional world, arm wrestling in the US is apparently sometimes performed for high stakes at local nightclubs. This is where the movie opens, as we are introduced to our protagonist, Mark, played by Ma Dong Seok. Mark apparently grew up in the United States and found employment as a bouncer in a nightclub later in life. We find out through a visiting Korean friend that Mark used to be quite a proficient arm wrestler and had won several high profile tournaments in the US. Later in the movie we also find out that Mark has a chance to go compete in Korea, since in the US he was apparently accused of match fixing and banned from the local arm wrestling leagues. While the movie has several plot lines that are only tangentially related to arm wrestling, and a lot of it is portrayed as somewhat humorous, and in some cases even a little overly dramatic, the actual arm wrestling that does take place is of a believable quality. It's obvious real arm wrestlers actually contributed to the arm wrestling related scenes and general plot of the movie, as even the training sessions of our protagonist come off as somewhat realistic. Of course, it is still a Korean dramedy, so expect some slightly exaggerated, yet still captivating scenes and plot beats. Despite the middle of the movie dragging on a bit at times, I feel like Champion is a solid watch and a true homage to arm wrestling as a sport. Without giving too much away, the movie also sets itself up for a possible sequel quite nicely. <laughs> The last entry in today's video is also the most recent example. In the 2021 Hollywood Marvel blockbuster Black Widow, arm wrestling is featured in a prison scene for a couple minutes. Serving as a way to illustrate one of the villain's inhuman strength, this scene managed to grab my attention in what is otherwise a pretty dull viewing experience. Maybe marble fatigue set in, but I'm having a hard time staying awake through most of these movies lately. In the scene we see our Russian bad guy casually destroying people in a sit-down arm wrestling match in a prison cafeteria. When eventually faced with something of a Vitali Laletin type character, the villain decides to snap his opponent's wrist, leading to a pretty comical portrayal of what would undoubtedly be a career-ending injury. It's not as gruesome as the scene in The Fly, but still a funnily disturbing entry from a movie you might not have expected in this list. So that was it, a quick firing of several movies that featured arm wrestling scenes. If you're thinking of some scenes that I should have covered, but haven't, I'd love to hear them in the comments. Also, if you enjoy long and short form content about the history of arm wrestling, make sure to subscribe and check out some of my other older work. As always, a massive shout out to our Armians and Finger folk who help keep the channel alive. Arm Historian, out.